I bet you're wondering how I got here. And I bet you're also curious about what this is. Well, you see, it all started when I created Kerbal Space Program Hardcore Mode. Part 3. The hidden game mode that unlocks a brand new feeling. Pain. Kerbals can actually die. There are no respawns, only memorials. Science payouts are set far lower. Kerbals will rebel if they are not taken care of on long space missions. And most importantly, restarts are disabled. If the space kraken strikes three hours into a delicate mission, then I have to restart it from the beginning. Last time we took our first steps on another celestial body, created a geostationary satellite network, conducted a ridiculous rescue operation in low Kerbin orbit, and lost two more Kerbals. If you are counting, that's four so far. In this episode, we are going to begin spreading out our tendrils into space by launching probes to scout out a nearby planet, collect science around the sun, intentionally crash a rocket into another rocket during orbit, construct an orbital space station, and then send it off to do some serious science. So, commence. A large and rather untapped well of science potential is sitting there rather untouched by the Void Space Program. We have tried to collect science data from many moves. But these missions have completely failed due to completely unavoidable circumstances. Oh my gosh, I just fat fingered the time accelerator. The Mint program has thus been revived, but with a far more elegant craft. Having unlocked bigger rocket parts, the launch stage has been streamlined, and more importantly, the landing stage has incorporated more Delta V to make sure we got enough to actually come back home. There was indeed a lot riding on this mission, so it was launched, got into an encounter with Minmus, and didn't even bother getting into orbit. Came straight in for a landing. Suffering from immense amounts of PTSD from the previous Minmus mission, our engineers played it safe with a time accelerator and came in for the most elegant soft landing in BSC history. Oh yeah. This looks good. That was perfect. We collected our science and then moved on to phase two. The probe was designed to have enough science bits to collect science from two separate biomes on Minmus. The craft was therefore relocated to this hill right over there that does suspiciously look like ice cream, and it came in for another smooth landing. Not exactly flat, but it'll do. Collected more science, and then returned. We even had enough gas to slow down around Kerbin, leading to a very soft, easy re-entry with minimal flames and explosions. Excellent work. This monumental success allowed us to unlock ladders, more ladders, and the single most overpowered part in the entire game, but more on that later. Because for now, it was time to attempt a very first for the VSC. For now, we've been conducting all of our science missions inside of the Kerbal system, which only includes the Mun and Mini Moose. But if you zoom out the game just a tad, you will see there's a lot more to explore. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Mission Control has designed two probes that will collect science in different areas of other systems. The first is known as the Soul Program. It is launched and gets into orbit with the intention of collecting different data around Kerbal. That's the analog for the sun in this game. Its rocket burns to place it in a highly elliptical orbit where it can eventually get into a low orbit and then beam back all of that spicy star science. And also get very, very hot. The high orbit science is sent back home and then we are able to collect some other science in about a year or so, so for now, we wait. The other probe's goal is to scout out our nearest planetary neighbor, the planet Duna. Duna is meant to represent Mars, but is much more red and also has a moon too, known as Ike. Our probe is then aligned to encounter Ike as well, so maybe it can send back some of our information about these two bodies. But as for now, we barely know anything about them, just what we can see through our very fuzzy telescopes. It will also take a very long time to reach its intended destination, so we set up the alarm clocks and then once again, we wait. But we don't sit around on our hands, because in the meantime, there is much more to be learned about our own system. And we are about to embark on the hardest project ever conceived by Kerbal Khan. We need some sort of permanent installation to observe the effects of gravity on our weird frog bodies. We need a base of operations in the cosmos. We need a place to send craft that is not inside the atmosphere of Kerbal. We need a space station. Introducing the Void Space Center, the absolute cutting edge of Kerbal technology, and also the heaviest thing ever attempted to launch into orbit so far. Gone are the days of the Kerbals rebelling in space after simply a week of not eating. Sissies. It has the capability of supporting three Kerbals in space over a period of one year. It also even has emergency supplies stored away in case of an emergency. It also has an onboard communication module equipped with two relay antenna, as well as short antenna for closer communication. It has an onboard science module that allows our scientists to process data in flight and beam that right back home, without the need of enduring scary re-entry. 
It has not one, but two habitational modules, allowing our Kerbal's room to stretch out their legs during these long, tedious days aboard the VSC. It has monopropellant thrusters for easy space maneuvering, docking ports allowing other craft to interface directly with the station, and most importantly, it has a bag duct taped to the side of it completely filled with many, many struts. But our engineers still need a bit more time to completely prepare the new mission, and in the meantime, there is another rocket set to launch, and that one is the Mint Mark IV. Similar to previous missions, but there are two extra fuel tanks for extra Delta V. This time, there are also four of each science module so we can gather science for multiple biomes. And also, a funny middle section to deploy a relay in Mini Moose's orbit. We do a fairly typical launch and then circularize around the Minty Moon. But this time, while we are in orbit, we have a lot of work to do. The relay probe is then undocked from the main landing stage. Now in theory, even if we land on the far side of Minmus, then we maybe can still have some probe control, if our relay satellite can make a connection back to the VSC. But for now, as it turns out, I forgot to turn the landing stage towards the sun, and it ran out of power while I was moving the relay satellite into a position. I had no control of the ship. While trying to time warp, I thought maybe that there was an angle where it could actually receive solar power. But it was not true. No matter what angle I put it in, it never got power, and I couldn't actually rotate it either. Just as I was about to give up and launch a whole nother probe, I had a harebrained idea. That seemed, that seemed to work a little bit. Maybe this is the most ridiculous thing if this works. Okay, coming in for another bump. Oh yeah, wait, no, other craft. Turn off SAS. Allow yourself to be bumped. Oh, yeah, bro. Excellent. Engage SIS. I cannot believe that that worked. <laughs> I was totally able just to smack it with the relay satellite and push it into the direction that the solar panels could get into sunlight. I time warped a little bit and we actually got power, but the hard part was not quite over. The Mint Mark IV had to come in and land on four separate biomes of Minmus and collect maximal science. That means I had to land not once, but at least four separate times on the surface, all without fat fingering the time acceleration button, managing my speed properly during landing, and running out of fuel. The stakes were high, and I was indeed feeling the pressure. The first biome selected was a lake we had never been to before. That went well, so we relocated to a nearby hill. That went well too, but I briefly encountered an issue where my nav ball was not changing to surface mode. I seem to be moving horizontally at a rather alarming rate, even though my nav ball says it's straight up and down. Oh, I wasn't at sur- oh my gosh, I wasn't at surface velocity. Okay, that's why. I must just be so high up that the game didn't know. Thankfully, when we got close, honestly, a little too close, the nav ball fixed itself and absolute catastrophe was therefore avoided. Science was collected, and we set course for another separate biome. This biome is known as the Slopes. I looked around and found the steepest hill nearby and therefore set course to land on it. Coming in for the third landing. Third landing. This one's looking very, very steep. I can't, Man, if I blew up on the third one, that would be depressing. I'm totally gonna tip over. Can I get some signs quick? No, nope. bup, 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 bup. That's fine, just collect some science mid-slide. But things were not so smooth, and worst of all, the biggest slope was not even classified as a slope. Ridiculous. One of my landings was wasted, but undeterred we set course for our final stop, Minmus's North Pole. Upon closing in, the same issue with the nav ball happened again, but luckily I was able to burn blindly good enough to not explode. Nope, nope, and preferably not on a big old rock. Oh, it's, it's, it's on a rock. It's gonna be on a rock. The most precarious landing ever. Quick, science! Get out of here, dude. Get out of here. Terrifying. And while this rocket's on its way home, this is an amazing time for me to shamelessly beg you to subscribe to my channel. Please. I need it. Anyway, copious amounts of science were harvested and upon re-entry came in for a landing. This mission was a huge improvement for the VSC, bagging us the most science yet collected in a single mission. 457. This allowed us to unlock better solar panels and advanced construction for use in the brand new space station. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Upon checking back in, the Void Space Center's core module is on the launch pad and ready for liftoff. Ready to launch our heaviest payload ever into orbit. Our three bravest Kerbals are loaded into the ship. Ron Monet, Bob, and Darwin. Danwin? 
might be day one. If it all goes well, they will not be returning back home for at least a year. This launch was also incredibly dangerous because there is no launch escape system, or really even parachutes. But we persevered anyway. We prepared the craft and began ascent. After a steady liftoff, an orbit of 250k meters was selected, and we parked her there, for now. You see, because after setting up the space station, the second part of our grand plan is to collect enormous amounts of science. This was only the first launch required, because the space station is going to be mobile. But it barely has any Delta V left, so we need to send up a drive stage. Luckily, it's already been under construction for a while now, and is currently on the launch pad waiting to rendezvous with the main ship. Once getting into range, the drive stage performed a series of precise movements to connect up and dock with the space station. Now, you may be wondering just what in the hell these things are, so I guess it's time to unveil the entirety of our master plan. We are going to move this entire station into orbit around the moon. Then, once we get there, we are going to send these probes down to the surface, collect science from a biome we haven't explored before, redock with the mothership, a scientist will then come out, collect all the science, and reset the experiments. The scientist will then return back to the craft and perform experiments on said data. The landing probe will then be sent back down to the surface to collect more science from a different biome. And once research is completed, all of that data will be sent back home. Attached to the station are in fact four of these crafts, so hopefully by the end of this, most of the moon will have been explored. At least, that's the plan, but in hardcore mode, nothing seems to go to plan. So, we'll see. But before we can set off on our maiden voyage, there are some slight alterations to be made to the craft. Right now, it is a bit of noodle mode. Danwin, the engineer of the ship's job, was as straightforward as it was fun to do. She needed to take these struts that we have locked away in the cargo hold and more or less duct tape the craft back together as to not flail around during transit. This task was then accomplished without any major incidents and now on to the main event. The station was completely flipped around to point retrograde, a strategic burn was enacted to dip back into the atmosphere, just to drop off our extra space trash and have it burn up in Kerbin. The craft was then rotated back into position, a course was plotted for the MUN, and then the engines fired up for our journey into the cosmos. Thank you for watching until the end of my video, I really appreciate it. Please hit that like or subscribe button and share this video with somebody you think might like it. Anyway, 